Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's just 11.59, so we'll probably give it just a couple more minutes before we begin, but feel free to grab a last minute bathroom break or a beverage, and then we'll begin about a 12.01, so in just about two minutes here. Gonna get one more minute and then uh, I will introduce our town hall. Welcome everyone to the Community and Social Development Town Hall. For those of you that don't know me, I am Rachel Zoops, the Manager of Community Development. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us today. The Town Hall kind of stemmed from the last survey that was done by the Community and Social Services Task Force, stemming that a lot of our organizations wanted more opportunities to connect both with council and administration. So that's why we brought together this uh, stunning group of panelists with us today. Uh, just kind of a few house rules before we begin. We are in a Zoom webinar style. So you will have noticed that you as a participant don't actually have a microphone or a video. The people that you see in, on your screen are all the members of our panelists and we'll be going through a quick introduction with them. Uh, we do have some pre-submitted pre questions, but if you guys do have any questions, please feel free to use the Q&A chat function. Uh, if you move your mouse around, on the bottom you'll have a Q&A text box. So if you click on that, you'll be able to submit your questions there. And we will try to answer all of them today. Uh, as a quick reminder, if you do have to leave early, do not worry, this seminar will be recorded and we will also kind of type out all the questions later on. So uh, all the questions will be emailed out uh, on behalf of Christine Isaac to you within the next week. If we are unable to answer your question today, we will also follow up on there. Uh, as we are being recorded, if you're uncomfortable having your name in in, in any place, please feel free to change your name over to your organization name. Uh, we're requesting that you at least have that so that if we do have to follow up with you individually, we have your organizational information so that we can follow up. Just next slide. Sorry, it won't let me switch. <laughs> oh dear. There we go. So just a quick overview of the agenda. Uh, the front end will probably take us about 10, 15 minutes and then the remainder will be all about question and answer period. So we'll do a quick uh, panel's introduction. Uh, we'll give each panelist about 20, 30 seconds to introduce themselves. Then we will do a highlight from Volunteer Leduc presented by Alana Hansen, a highlight of the Community Social Services Task Force uh, presented by Councillor Bev Beckett and Councillor Lars Hansen, Lars Hansen. And then obviously we'll do the questions and answer period. When we get close to that Q&A, we do ask that you refrain from asking us questions specific to LRC or bookings, as that is out of our scope for today's town hall. But if you do have specific questions, please feel free to reach out back to your point of contact at the LRC. So as I mentioned, we'll do a quick introduction. So I will let these individuals introduce themselves and we'll give them about 20, 30 seconds, and then I will Right after that, I will pass over to Lana Hansen to give you guys an update from Volunteer Leduc. So, Councillor Lars. Hi, folks. Uh, Councillor Lars Hansen here uh, from the city of Leduc. Uh, thank you all for joining us today uh, and looking forward to the great discussion. Councillor Beth. 
Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you so very, very much for joining us. I'm Beverly Beckett, uh, counselor, and my second term as counselor. And I'm so pleased to be a, a part of the, this task force and to actually help uh, manage our way through COVID pandemic. And as I mentioned already, I am uh, Rachel Zooks, manager of community development. I'll also be your moderator today during the question and answer period. Amanda, I'll pass it to you. Hello, everyone. I'm Amanda Hollerickson. I'm the manager with Family and Community Support Services, or better known as FCSS, here representing the social services side. Tasha. I'm Tasha Turner. I'm the manager of cultural development, um, recently renamed from Arts, Culture, and Heritage. So I work, part of my portfolio is with McLab. So I have done a lot of reading of guidelines and how they apply in different situations, if you have questions about that for arts groups. And, um, and I work with heritage and arts groups throughout the city. Christine. Hey everybody, I'm Christine Isaac. I'm the Community Development Coordinator for the City of Leduc, and I am the main point of contact for the nonprofits in our area. So you can always reach out to me if you have any questions and I'll do my best to find an answer for you. And last but not least, Alana, I'll let you introduce yourself and then I'll let you go straight into your Volunteer Leduc update. Hi everybody, I'm Ilana Hassan. I'm the Volunteer Resource Administrator for the City of Leduc. So as I said, I handle volunteerism and all things um, volunteers, as well as handling our grants to organization and our municipal grants and those kind of things. So thank you, Rachel, for allowing me to uh, share with everybody my volunteer strategy. Um, and also like to say cheers to everybody that has our volunteer Leduc mugs. Hope, thank you for joining us all for coffee. And if you haven't received yours, um, please let me know. I'll be sending one off to you as soon as we can. So uh, the volunteer, the original volunteer Leduc strategy was created in 2009 to capitalize on the significant levels of volunteerism for the Alberta Winter Games. And the goal has always been to recognize, enhance, uh, and enhance the existing base of volunteers through support and development and to uh, capitalize and establish new ongoing initiatives um, to enhance the volunteer sector. So that's what we've done in the past. Moving forward, oh, sorry, my apologies. Some of the initiatives from the past have been the Citizens of Distinction Awards and Volunteer Appreciation Banquet, the Volunteer Fair, the Random Acts of Volunteer Excellence, promotions of volunteer opportunities, which many of you know, I, uh, I do a lot of that board development and assistant programs and relationships, building relationships with nonprofit organizations. So Volunteer Leduc's mission to ensure that connections are in place for us to build community, respond to isolation and invest in the future came from very specific stories from our community. Volunteer Leduc has a unique privilege of being able to hear a story tell a story and then see the story plays out. And as community organizations, um, very often you and I know exactly how that works. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun to tell our stories, listen to our stories and promote each other. From these stories, we focused on how we can support our volunteers and organizations by creating opportunities for citizens to connect. The goal is to ensure a supportive and inclusive community. The name of the five-year strategy is Building Strong. Volunteer Leduc works with people, organizations, and businesses to connect them and build them strong. Volunteer Leduc has been part of many conversations in the last few years, but in particular this year. Meaningful conversations from people in our community, uh, the region, the province, and the country. So reviewing those conversations, some of the same thoughts were always at the forefront. How do we show the true value of volunteering? The, the val or sorry, that volunteering makes in the community. Of course, there's the monetary uh, value, the cost saving to our organizations and the volunteers um, assisting our organizations with the work that they do. But there's so much more than this. After hearing these stories, we started thinking about how volunteering fulfills a void in many um, 
diverse needs and the people in our community. So we put it together like this. Each individual organization and business in our community has important needs and each individual organization and built business in our community has something important to offer each other. So by networking and building relationships that allow us to listen to those stories, then tell those stories, it enables us to connect people to what matters to them. And that's how we see how the story plays out. So the Building Strong uh, strategy was driven by four key priorities. Priority one is tell our story, the stories of our community, so that everybody knows how they can contribute and wants to be part of it. I read a quote a while back from Brene Brown, a world-renowned researcher and writer, and she writes, stories are data with a soul. So by telling these stories, we're not only building engagement, but we're capturing important data that can, can assist us for the future. Priority two is create the connection. And so that's what part of this um, town hall and listening cafe is all about as well. Uh, so that we're creating the connections to those important needs and important offerings find each other. Priority three is build the capacity. Skilled volunteers are golden. So let's hook up the right volunteer for the job, educate the volunteers that are doing the job and help build organizations strong. Priority four is activate and empower. Let's meet those in the community that didn't know that they had something to contribute and let's give them a vision and then the skills to communicate and contribute. Each priority has actions that help celebrate, educate and promote volunteerism and invest in people, organizations and businesses in our community to build them strong. So part of this, this strategy, we're gonna work on our volunteer management database. So all of you know, we have a database, overall a thousand people on that database. We're working at expanding it. We're look, working at um, making it user-friendly so that you as organizations in time can post your opportunities. Um, we'll be able to, um, it'll be easier to post the opportunities. We'll be able to track volunteer hours. Uh, volunteers can track their own kind of hours. So it'll be a great asset to us um, helping each other promote each other. We're going to continue with the special events that we always do as soon as COVID allows us to. We're going to carry on with our volunteer appreciation banquet or in any ways that we possibly can. We're going to carry on with our citizen recognition program, our random acts of volunteer excellence, the volunteer management handbook that we have. We're going to expand that. We're going to continue with the branding and promotion of volunteerism and, of course, celebrating our National Volunteer Week as well as board development. And so this slide here just tells, gives you a little bit of an idea how each year everything has been planned so that the, the, the year after that, we will just expand and carry on from that. Perfect, thank you Alana for the update from Volunteer Leduc. Uh, before I hand it over to Councillor Hansen and Councillor Beckett, I just wanna remind everyone that that question and answer box is open for you guys to submit any questions. Uh, our panel is here to answer any questions related to uh, any of our departments. So F family and community support services, arts, culture, heritage, community development, organizational support or the task force itself. Uh, we did have a question I can answer right now. Uh, it was a question regarding, will we be sent a copy of the PDF question of the presentation? And we can definitely do that. And I'll also have all our contact information at the very end. So that's not a problem. But for now, I will turn it over to Councillor Beckett and Councillor Hansen to give us an update from the task force. Well, thank you very much, Rachel. So good afternoon, everyone. And uh, thank you for joining the town hall today. Uh, we know that the pandemic continues to impact all of the organizations and businesses in Leduc. However, despite the challenges we continue to face, we know our community remains wonderfully creative, resilient, and strong. As we move forward, please know that providing support and recovery assistance to your organization remains a priority for our task force. Today's town hall is one of many opportunities for us to check in and ensure that we, we remain connected. 
In addition to the monthly newsletter that goes out to help clarify any COVID-19 information, courtesy of our community and social development team, you may have also seen or participated in a survey last spring. This survey helped us to benchmark how the Duke organizations are doing in comparison to others in the province. It also allows us to continue identifying additional supports and resources for, for organizations. And this is why your continued feedback is critical in helping us to plan and provide supports that will be as impactful as possible for your organizations. We know that there are a lot of things that stay, uh, that a lot of things to stay on top of in navigating the effects of, of the pandemic and in planning your, it for the recovery. And so you can look to us for continued support as there are a number of resources that are available on our website and we also provide on-site inspections or advice upon request. Uh, now we'll hear from Councillor Hansen. Hi folks. Uh, so as we prepare to move from uh, response to recovery from COVID-19, there are many things for nonprofit organizations to consider, uh, such as the evolving external environment and their internal capacity. Uh, Integral Org has put together a checklist to support you in identifying current and future needs in the recovery phase. Uh, this has been shared throughout the province as the tool for organizations. Um, this resource has also been shared throughout the province as a tool for organizations. Oh, just said that. Um, next slide. I think. Uh, community development offers a number of training and development opportunity for Leduc's nonprofit organizations throughout the year. Touching on a wide variety of topics, they're designed to help organizations develop effective and efficient planning strategies and processes. So thank you again for attending today's town hall. Uh, we hope the information provided here has been helpful and please do not hesitate to reach out. Uh, we look forward to continuing to support you and your organization in navigating the recovery from COVID-19 in the year to come. Uh, I'll now pass it back to uh, Rachel and we'll get the Q&A started, I think. Thank you, Councillor Hansen and Councillor Beckett for providing your update. Uh, we do have a bunch of questions that have been pre-submitted to us from either organizations that were unable to attend or uh, were originally registered for this evening session and we had condensed it down just to low numbers. So uh, again, that question and answer box is completely open for you guys to type in all your questions. Uh, we will try to answer them all live today and obviously if we can't, we will find that answer for you. Uh, copies of these questions will be emailed out afterwards from uh, what the questions are, as well as what the responses are from our panelists. So the first person on the hot seat, I have a couple questions for Alana with Volunteer Leduc. Uh, how can Volunteer Leduc assist my organization in getting new volunteers? Thank you. Um, so it's pretty easy. Volunteer Leduc has a volunteer opportunity form that you fill out and you submit it to me. And then I take your request and I send it into to all the people on our database um, via my volunteer love letter. And just simply lets everybody out there know what the opportunity is and who they can contact to volunteer for your organization. And there was another question for Alana. Where do volunteers come from and how does someone volunteer with the organization? So volunteers come from many different parts of Leduc. Sometimes they even come from Edmonton. And, and so realistically, um, you, you can sign up right for Volunteer Leduc, put your name on the database, and then I will connect you with the organizations um, that you're looking for. Thank you, Alana. Question for Ashley, Christine Isaac with Community Development. Are there any grants that can be accessed for programming or a capital project with the city? Absolutely, Rachel. Um, the Grant Connect database is actually the best resource you can do unless you like that old fashioned Googling that also works. Um, but we are offering a board development session next week on April 14th with the Leduc Public Library. And they're going to be running through a tutorial of how to use Grant Connect and uh, offering some questions and answers to anybody who might have them. So if you'd like to register for that session, please go ahead. The registration is open until Monday afternoon. Christine, to follow up on that and uh, the, the sessions that Councillor Hansen had brought up, 
how do uh, organizations find out more about the upcoming uh, webinars or how do they sign up? Absolutely. Uh, our sessions are listed on our social media quite often. And I also send um, the sessions out with our monthly newsletters if you're getting those in your email. If you are missing out on our monthly newsletters, please feel free to shoot me an email and I will add you to our list. There's a ton of great information in that newsletter every month. I have a question here for Amanda with FCSS. Uh, if organizations are trying to find additional services that are available through FCSS, how do they find them and what is the referral process for them? Thanks, Rachel. Um, there is really, there is a referral process, but you don't need a referral to access FCSS. Any resident located in the city of Leduc can contact FCSS at any time on our main line, which is 780-980-7109. And you can contact and request support directly yourself um, through our team and we'll get you connected with the best support worker for you or those, or those contacts that you need. Um, additionally, sometimes referrals do come from other organizations in the community, and that's just fine as well, um, but you don't need that to access FCSS supports. Um, also, there is a lot of information on the City of Leduc website if you wanted to look there as well for other resources that are available in the community, and you can find us at leduc.ca under Family and Community Support Services. There are a list of resources for the pandemic a list of resources that um, reflect the recent trauma that we had in our community, and then a list of resources for basic needs, et cetera, kind of broken down into different departments and different areas of need. Um, but please feel free to call FCSS at any time if there is information that you're requiring for yourself or for a client or for a family or friend member. We're happy to answer those questions for you. Thanks, Amanda. And, and also to add to that, for a lot of our organizations that deal specifically with uh, arts, recreation, or sports programs, FCS is also a vast knowledge for if you're looking at accessing Canadian Tire Jumpstart or the Creative Culture Connections, they're, they're your best point of contact. Amanda, another question for you that came in. Uh, there's, been, there's been a social media posting regarding an upcoming homelessness strategy. Can you give us a little bit more information or where they can find information about that? Sure. So, um... We worked really hard this past year. Um, we're looking at some homeless and poverty information in our community, and we had a five-step plan towards um, providing information for council on that. Um, we presented that information um, late last year, and what has come of that is that we are going to um, put together a homeless and poverty reduction task force. Um, so that will be happening in a month, um, and we'll be launching that, and more information will come out of that as we progress through that transition. Um, there is some information on homelessness and some information on poverty as well on the leduc.ca website where you can access resources around those two topics. Perfect. A couple questions for uh, Tasha with cultural development. Uh, where can I find information about the new cultural strategy? That's a great question. So you may or may not know there was a new cultural development strategy approved by council just before Christmas. So um, it's available right now on the uh, meeting minutes and agenda from that meeting. So it was December 7th and we can include the, the link to that. It's on page 24 to 45. Um, we're doing a final couple, couple edits before we, uh, we put it in print. And once that happens, um, there will be a downloadable copy available from directly from the City of Leduc website where the other strategies and plans exist. Another question for you, and I know that you were just impacted by the announcements yesterday. Are there any virtual events or shows happening at the McLab? So at the McLab, we, we started before Christmas. We had a couple virtual events. Um, and actually, I guess we had a virtual event yesterday. We hosted one. Um, with the restrictions the way that they are right now, it has been almost impossible to get anyone into the house to even perform. So we can't, we can't record people um, in order to, to share them out virtually. So right now we're focusing on, on the next season, um, which we hope to start after Culture Days in the fall. And speaking of Culture Days, do you have any information for some of our arts culture organizations if they want to get involved? Yes, so Culture Days is alive and well. They, the government did a, a big pivot last year on how Culture Days operates. And it went from just being a weekend long um, 
kind of place-based event to an entire month of virtual virtual programming throughout the country. So if you go to culturedays.ca, um, they have the dates listed up there and there's a ton of resources in, in ways that you can, um, things that you can use and ideas to spur on how you might want to participate and we've got it we've just started our planning process but keep checking um, our social media and the website for for updates on how that's coming along it's going to be an exciting culture days this year a couple questions for counselor hansen or counselor beckett regarding the task force are there services to assist us to ensure that our space is COVID compliant when we are opening up again Uh, I can uh, provide some information on that one. Um, On-site inspections and recommendations are available upon request. Uh, one thing I can uh, mention is that during the first reopening of the Leduc Public Library, I'm actually the council rep on the Leduc Public Library Board, uh, they had an on-site inspection. And so the staff had really great things to say about that. Uh, they had folks come in and, and provide, uh, you know, uh, signage and uh, things on the ground to, to show where to walk and whatnot. So uh, it's, it's a great service uh, and, uh, you know, that's available upon request for uh, any organizations. And to follow up with that one, Councillor Hansen, uh, there's been some discussion that there's going to be a new community directory launched. Uh, it's supposed to showcase kind of information and contact information from all our community groups. So how can a community group get included into that community directory? Sure, yeah, any nonprofit group in Leduc or Leduc County uh, may be included in that community directory. Uh, and you can just send your information to community development at leduc.ca. We just actually had a carry with the Leduc Grain Elevator just mentioned that Leduc, or the Culture Days grant application did just come out. So, another question, actually, I'll direct this back to Christine with community development is if, if an organization is looking for assistance applying for a, a grant or sourcing grant, what kind of resources are out there to help them? Thanks, Rachel. Uh, there are a lot of resources out there. I mean, tons of stuff that you can find uh, on the internet, but definitely reach out directly to me if you have any questions. I'm available to answer a question or help find you in the answer to your question, but I also can help you with drafts of your grant as well. Um, so my email address is cisaac at leduc.ca. Uh, and I'm sure most of you know that already, but definitely feel to reach out if you have any questions at all. Back to Alana with Volunteer Leduc. We have a question is, will there be a Sits of Distinction award ceremony this year? You bet your buttons there will be. Um, at this point, can you hear me now? Yeah. At this point, uh, the plan is to be hosting that Citizens of Distinction ceremony on April 30th. It'll be live streamed from the McLab Theater, um, uh, just as long as restrictions will allow. And if that doesn't happen, we'll find another way to get her done. So there's a there's a plan A, B, C, and D for all of our events. And so um, you will be receiving emails in the next little bit to kind of announce that and look for more information on social media as well. And just to follow up on that, will this year's ceremony be just in recognizing the 2019 recipients or will there also be 2020 recipients as well? So what we're going to do is, is because we weren't able to recognize the 2019 um, Citizens of Distinction, we will recognize those in the awards ceremony. And then we put together a uh, Kindness Counts campaign that will recognize the volunteers, uh, the many people, not just volunteers, but the many people in our community that were kind to their neighbors, that did those little thoughtful things um, to look out for one another. So uh, volunt or people in the community have submitted videos, we put together a video to say thank you to all of those people. Uh, question for Councillor Becky with the task force. Where can more information be found concerning current re restrictions for organizations? So there's a, a whole host of information that's available and certainly um, uh, Amanda at uh, FCSS and also Tasha and also Ilana. So we've got a whole team there that's available for us and you just need to reach out to these people and they will be more than happy to assist you. I have another question for Christina, the community development. We are not sure if our not-for-profit is permitted through our bylaws to host our AGM virtually. 
Is there someone we could connect with with questions or for advice on how to host that AGM? That's a great question that I get a lot, actually. Um, so every group is allowed to host their AGM virtually right now. Uh, there was a change made to the Societies Act. So it doesn't matter what your bylaws say, you may host your AGM virtually. Um, if there's anyone who has any questions or like some help on how to operate with their AGM virtually, definitely feel free to reach out to me directly. Those are kind of all the mixtures of pre-submitted questions. We'll just leave it for probably another five minutes if you guys want to ask any of your questions in our Q&A chat. And if not, we will probably let everyone get, a, get back to their lunch, lunch break. But I, I do want to thank everyone for taking the time out of their day to join us today. And we'll definitely be having more of these throughout the year. I think we're aiming to have them at least probably two or three times a year for, for an opportunity for you guys as organizations to connect back with the city. But I'll leave it up for a few more minutes. So please submit any final questions that you guys may have. Hey, Rachel, um, one thing that, uh, you know, I know we didn't necessarily plan to talk about this today, but one thing that, that folks might be uh, interested in hearing a little bit about uh, is grants to organizations and, and when that might uh, uh, come online that, you know, folks can start submitting applications to, to grants to organizations. I'll pass it to Alana, who is our grants organization's master. So thank you, Lars. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, we have already posted um, the deadline or it actually grants to organization has been open since March 1st. So organizations can go on now and do their applications. The deadline for the applications is May 12th. And once we get all those, then we'll um, put them all together, send them to our citizen or our committee and um, review and then go from there. So I have a question here. It was uh, the hospital foundation is kicking off the explore more initiative on April 11th, going to Thanksgiving. This is a health and wellness initiative promoting people to get out and move on the paths. How can I work with the city to help promote this event to our community? I can kind of answer that. If you send your information over to us, we can definitely share it with our uh, variety of, of streams. Uh, I'm not sure if Celia is still here with our CMS uh, that can kind of explain kind of our, our rules and policies regarding uh, promotion for outside of the city of Leduc. But if she isn't able to answer that, I can definitely find an answer and kind of get you more information as well. She may not be here right now. So I will find that answer for you, Colleen, and I'll get that back to you. Doesn't seem like any more questions are coming in. Do it, did any of our panelists have any uh, last minute things they want to kind of uh, provide for any of our organizations that are attending today? Actually, if I can pipe in, I never got a chance to, to let everybody know that although we can't have our volunteer banquet, we still want to celebrate our volunteers and our organizations during National Volunteer Week. So those of you who would normally um, have attended the banquet, look for an email from um, Katie or myself later this afternoon inviting you to a National Volunteer um, virtual um, drive-by ceremony where each of you, each organization can have a little drive by the Civic Center and we will promote or we will present your organization with a thank you gift. So it's, it's, it's a backpack full of gifts that you normally would have gotten from the banquet. And so of course, those journals that we had last year, you're so going to get those. They were printed um, especially for you. We've also put together a social media kit. So it's tailored for how to's um, on Facebook and Instagram, along with a little booklet. So teach you little tutorials on how to get your Instagram going and get that updated. Um, we've got gift cards and we've got lots and lots of volunteer swag. So uh, look for that email from either Katie or myself reminding you to come and celebrate us during that week. That, that is going to be April 22nd between five and six. And somebody from your organization can just come through our little drive through say hello, and uh, get our celebration bag. 
And other than that, there, uh, we'll probably wrap this up because there's no more questions, but I wanted to kind of continue to extend that you do have majority of our emails. Uh, if you ever have any information or you want to connect more with a specific department, I'm certain each one of us would be more than happy to uh, connect with you directly and have a further conversation with you. So there are a few emails there. Uh, if you don't have Amanda or Tasha's email directly, please email us at communitydevelopment.duke.ca and we'd be more than happy to connect you uh, with whoever you're looking for. So again, thank you on behalf of uh, administration and city of Leduc for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing you guys again at our next town hall.